How's it going everybody, Ben from Basic Mew here and welcome back to the channel. I do apologize if I still sound a bit sick, still have a cold unfortunately, but in this video I am opening the 5th anniversary traditional Chinese Pikachu gift box set. That's a mouthful for a product, but before we jump in I have to point out my new playmat. This is the Pokemon Suju Masters playmat and I do also have to point out this is limited to 3000 pieces. It's really really cool because it does feature Mew. Huge Huge thanks to my friend Lucas who got this to me as a gift for reaching 1000 subscribers. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this opening. I'm actually really excited for this opening. To be fair though, I didn't actually expect this box to show up today. It has been delayed in shipping for just a little bit, but I'm really happy that it did show up in the end. Might have to grab the knife again. Nope, we're good. This is gonna be huge fun. It's also a nice change from the opening I did last time. Or like a few days ago, cause there were so many perks. Alright, sorry about that, I have to point out what we actually get in this one. So these are the types of promo cards what, that we get. Of course this huge Pikachu or this cool Pikachu, that's gonna be really really nice. Here we can also see one Pikachu, we also get a keychain which is really nice. A deck box, looks like a storage box, that is gonna be interesting. We also get a traditional Chinese super electric breaker booster box. So maybe I can try to pull that Hydragon from this one, or maybe even the Pikachu, we'll know. Or we'll see. We also get some cool sleeves and then 15 promo cards that are also stamped. And these ones, from what I recall and from what I see, are from the different eras of traditional Pokemon. Of course, starting back in the GX era the Sun and Moon era and then moving towards the Scarlet and Violet era. May notably write also down here, as you can see, for sale in Taiwan and Hong Kong only, it is made in Japan. So this is not a simplified Chinese product, as I said, this is a traditional Chinese product. Also kind of evident because it does feature sets from, well, Scarlet and Violet, you know, Super Electric Breaker. Something that has not been released in Simplified Chinese. I really like the box. It's just cardboard, but it's really well done, really well presented. Let's see. It is a lot smaller than I thought. I actually had anticipated this to be as big as the Pearl and Diamond Clan um, gift box. That was a little bit bigger, not as big as the, whatchamacallit, not as big as the first anniversary gift box, simplified Chinese one that is. And here we have our promo, seems to be stuck in between these. Let me first take the, the sleeves out. These seem pretty cool, very nice. I have a bunch of sleeves already, don't know what to do with them. Here is the keychain. That is, that is a bit bigger than I thought, it looked very, very tiny on that picture, but there we go. Nice keychain right there, we also get a cool booster box. Um, unfortunately don't know what to do with this one because I I still use this one. This is the Pikachu Adventure booster box that I got a while ago. This was like one of the first things I also bought when I returned back to the hobby. Everything, that's kind of strange. Everything I show you in these videos is also like one of the first things I bought, but it is the truth. All right, let me try to take this out. There we go. We also have our booster box. Let me take this one out. And I think that's everything in the box. Let me just get this one off the table. And then before we tackle the booster box, of course, we have to check this one out right here. So first off, though, we do have our traditional Chinese Pikachu promo. We have all kinds of cool Pokemon. We have Zoro Arc right here. We have, of course, the Mew, which is the most important one. We have the Pikachu main focus because it is a Pikachu promo. And we have Charizard down here with the terrestrialized crown, of course. Very, very nice looking. Let's see. Yeah, that looks really, really nice. That looks really nice. Don't know about that corner down there. That looks a bit sketchy. But other than that, and the edge down here also seems to be a bit... A bit on the, on the mean side or on the bad side. We'll see what this gets. I'll still send it into grading. All right, sleeving up the Pikachu right away. There we go, and all sleeved up. So, and then we also have these. So these are, from what I can understand, kind of like a trip down memory lane, because the traditional Chinese started all the way back with Sun and Moon, which might be this one, and these are just cards, which is really cool presented, in my opinion. These are just cards that have been used throughout the series. We also have the set name down here and the initial release date. And I'm guessing this is also the set name up right here. So we have Zoro Arc, we have um, Necrozma or Ultra Necrozma, one of the two, sorry, it's an Ultra Beast. 
don't know that when we have the Rayquaza, very nice. We have the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX recently pulled this one in Japanese. Also pulled this one. And we have the... Oh yeah, of course. I mean, you know this card if you've played during that time in the English TCG. ADP, so-called, or Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia GX. Really, really broken Tag Team GX attack. Really broken. Um, but the artwork is cool. The alternate art is top-notch, and I do have that one in Japanese, but there we go. That was the Sun and Moon era. This is the Sword and Shield era. So we're starting it off with Eternatus, okay. Mm, don't know if this one is actually that, like, dominant in that era. I do know that Mew was dominant for a little while. So I do recognize this one, or I know why this one is here. Let's see, Arceus V-Star, Giratina V-Star. This is actually a deck that I played during my very short time that I did play Pokemon TCG Live. Really enjoyed the Giratina V-Star deck. Really, really huge fun. And then, of oh yeah, of course, Lugia V-Star. That was also kind of a strong deck. I kind of wonder... Okay, so these are, like, attached by a little bit of glue. And then, like, in just the normal sleeve. I think I'm just gonna leave these attached. Because, honestly, just having these ones as, like, a presentation piece or, like, a discussion piece whenever you have someone over is just really, really cool. And then we have the Scarlet and Violet arrow, starting it off with the Miraidon EX. We have the... whatchamacallit? We have the Xian Pao. I actually had to look up the name because I wasn't sure. We have the Charizard EX, which is still going strong, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And also, we have the... we have the Roaring Moon EX right here. And then last but not least, the Iron Valiant EX, which is... isn't on straight, and that's kind of driving me nuts. It's like a little bit twisted. But all in all, I think this presentation is really cool. Like a trip down memory lane, what cards used to be... like really powerful when they released, the set name they released. Man, I wish the English TCG would do something like this. Wouldn't that be so cool to take a trip down memory lane? and see all the cards that used to be really, really strong in the competitive scene. I think that you that would be really, really cool. All right, on with the booster box that we get in this set, of course. Super Electric Breaker, this one in traditional Chinese. Let's see what we can pull in here. I'm actually really excited because I still need a bunch of cards from Super Electric Breaker. Hoping for that Hydragon. Hoping for that Hydragon or the Milotic. I think the Milotic is also in here. I always, always seem to mix them up. I th always think the Milotic is in Paradise Dragon, but it ends up being in Super Electric Breaker. Um, so we'll see. Maybe we can get lucky. Also, I just completely destroyed the box down here, unfortunately. But we shall see. Just like Japanese packs, of course. Five cards per pack. And only difference is, of course, right here, the international back of this one and some advertisement. I see. Let's get rid of that one and see what we can find. Maybe some first pack magic right here, Alolan Diglett and a Magneton right there. No, no first pack magic, but that's okay, though, since we do have a bunch of packs to go through. Man, as I said, it's so nice. It's such a nice change of pace to just be opening a smaller product as compared to the to the big ones that I did like a few days ago. Man, I was recording for over two hours in that opening. Yo, our A spec card, there we go, very nice. Yeah, I was recording for over two hours there and I kind of felt that one, that really, really wasn't such a good idea to go for that long, but what else are you, are you gonna do? I. I suppose I could have split it into like two, or not split into two videos, but maybe like record the rest of the opening like the next day. But you know, it is what it is. I still had a huge fun, especially opening that Tech Team GX All Stars booster box. Even though I only pulled the Mel Metal GX, I still had huge fun. I mean, I pulled the Mew Holographic and the Mew Reverse, in addition to the Mew and Mewtwo, or Mewtwo and Mew. Tag Team GX card, the one that actually is illustrated by Mitsuhiro Arita. Would have loved to either pull the Golden variant, which is actually Japanese exclusive still. Unless, unless um, it's also available in Chinese. Here we go, a Sphiel. Look at that, very cute, nice. I don't have that one yet. So that is very, very nice. That's a nice pull. I think they might have gotten released in, in Chinese, although I'm not quite certain if the gold cards have made it over to Chinese. 
Don't quote me on that. I just know they haven't made it over to English, and at this point, they probably won't ever. They probably won't ever make it over to English, which is such a shame. I really wish they would do like a, um, like they did in the, what was it, X and Y era, where they had like a really huge collection box with a bunch of full arts. I know that's where the, um, the, whatchamacallit, it, the Hex Maniac and the end comes from that I have. That was in like a promo box. It had like so many cool promos. I hope they do something like that again at some point. But we'll see. Our first holographic of the set. But still nothing to write home about other than this feel. This feel is cute. This feel is really, really cute. Okay, maybe I can pull, just like in the Japanese opening, maybe I can pull two super rares in this one too. But we shall see. Glimit. We have a Cacleon by Shinji Kanda. Very nice. Skeledurge. Really cool looking illustration by Akagi. And just a non-holographic there at the end. Alright, moving it on. So this one, as I said, just like the Japanese booster boxes. So in terms of promised, promised things, we should have two more art rares. And then of course our super rare, or better, Here's our first double rare. We should get, I think, four of these. Here we have the Durant, I'm pretty sure. Very nice. And see what else we can pull in this set. Ah, I just, I just love opening like these smaller sets. It's just such a nice change of pace. I said it like multiple times now, but it is the truth. That was probably the last time I ever do such a big opening, at least for the foreseeable future. I might do it again at some point. Maybe if I ever hit 10,000 subscribers, I might do a really big opening again. But for now, it's probably going to be smaller openings. Because that was, that was really interesting, to say the very least. All right, let's see. Maybe I can pull the Mesprit again. Pull the Mesprit twice, maybe? Have it in Japanese already. It's a really cool artwork. So I wouldn't mind an extra copy of that card. That one looks really, really nice. Not gonna lie. The Mesprit. I'm trying to think of the other art rares that are potentially in here. And at the top of my head, I don't really... I can't think of anything. Eternatus by my favorite artist, Akira Egawa. Um, speaking of Akira Egawa, she recently, or it was recently teased or released, a Chinese exclusive Articuno, presumably... Like one of the last illustrations from Pokemon Go, although because, you know, Pokemon Go was banned in mainland China from what I understand, they have to change some of the illustrations and the Articuno looks insane. Here we go. A Sandy Ghast or is this Palo Sand? I never know. Um, our double rare and this is a terrestrialized version of that one, so pretty nice. There we go, and a Tauros, very cool illustrated. And I just, like Akira Go, I don't know what it is, but all of her illustrations always look so cool. And it's not just Pokemon, she also does a bunch of illustrations for other TCGs. I think most notably the One Piece TCG, which I'm not, not that into, to be honest. Yo, the Hydreigon SAR, are you serious? And I said I really wanted to pull this one, and I did. Holy moly! Yo, okay, let me just show you the last card right here. Yo, are you serious? I actually pulled the Hydreigon. Nice! Akira Igawa coming through once again. Look at this. Yo, and that texture, man. Holy moly, this card looks sick. I don't know what it is with Akira Igawa. But I feel like she's like one of the only artists, I think there's only a handful, that can actually make the terrestrialized Pokemon look good. Because for the most part, they look ridiculous with their stupid crowns. Yes, I said it, yes, I know. But I think Akira Igawa found a perfect mix to make them look cool. Not just this one, look at the Charizard EX from um, Shiny Treasure EX or Paldean Fates. That one also looks incredible, and it's also illustrated by Akira Igawa. Like, whenever they... I think they should just hire Akira Igawa to do all the illustrations from now on. Actually, no. That, as much as I love Akira Igawa, I think it would get a little bit stale, because the diversity, of course, you got, you got people like Hyogunosuke right here, that does stuff like that. I think the, the diversity really, really helps in the Pokemon TCG. 
And I don't just speak about the illustrations, it's also the diversity of the people collecting. There are so many people out there, and most of them are collecting all kinds of different things. I mean, you have me out here, who is, I don't want to say only a Mew collector, but mostly, or first and foremost, a Mew collector, and then I do collect a bunch of other stuff. But there are so many people out there, so many different favorite Pokemon. This is what I love about this hobby. It brings us all together, no matter what you collect, no matter what you do, unless you're an investor, we can all enjoy the hobby in our own way. This is what I love about this hobby. I really do. All right, our other, this is our third double rare, our third, okay. So we should get one more double rare, and we should get two more art rares. Let me actually take these booster packs out. All right, and see what our last two art rares will be. I'm not holding my breath for any of the double rares, but the art rares are gonna be really, really special. And even though I did pull an SAR and I'm really happy about that, don't mean to be greedy, technically there is still a chance for a second super rare. I mean, that happens sometimes, but still, even if we don't, I'm super happy with this box. Jesus, man. That is so cool. The Hydragon SAR. Yo, I kind of have to think about what I do with that card. Either I stick it in my binder or I send it into Grain. I think the centering is a little bit, a little bit off. So I might just stick it in my binder and just probably look at it for the next few days. For the next few days. Oh, that, that reminds me. If you, if you ever bought like a really cool card that you've been chasing for like a really long time, like for me, the Mew EX I bought a while ago, that really, really expensive one. And what, like, do you also just open up your binding? Yo, the Mesprit, okay. I did say I wouldn't mind pulling this card twice. And there we are. We have the traditional Chinese Mesprit as well as the, um, as the Japanese one. Very nice. Okay. See, this is also a card I don't mind pulling twice. You're also getting sleeved up immediately. There you go. Mesprit right there. Okay, so one more art rare and one more double rare, I presume. We'll see. We'll still take our time. Last time I kind of rushed the opening after pulling my super rare. So this this one time I'm going to take my time. I'm going to just relax and appreciate the artworks of the commons and uncommons. Because I feel like, for the most part, they go underappreciated. There is so many great artworks. Yes, of course, we all like our shiny cardboard. I mean, I do too, as much as the next collector. But there's just stuff from Anasaki Dynamics, just on a common card, that I feel like goes underappreciated. This is a sick illustration, man. Look at that. That is so sick. This Victini as well. Yo, okay. Ah, man, I love this. This is this is a really great opening so far. Not only did we get a really cool promo in that box, no, we also managed to pull the Hydragon SAR, one of the cards that I was really chasing. Probably my number one chase card from Super Electric Breaker. That is probably my number one chase card. Right up next to that one would probably be the Milotic. So... Let's see, still need the Milotic, but that Hydragon, that Hydragon is insane. Really cool looking. Another Kecleon by Chinji Kanda. Here is our, our last double rare right here. Very nice. Put that aside. And a Magnezone. That also looks really nice. Man, if you just take the time and do yourself a favor, buy yourself a booster box of either Super Electric Breaker or Paradise Dracona, because I think those two sets are like one of the best Japanese sets that you can buy currently. And just, just give yourself like an hour time and open that booster box up. Not like quickly, just go through every single car, take your time, appreciate the artwork, and you'll see that there are masterpieces among the commons and uncommons. Look at this one, for example. Man, oh man. That is so nice. Kavayo as well. And you'll soon, if you do that a couple of times, you'll soon recognize your artists. You'll soon see from their art style, oh, that's Kavayo, or that's Yogonosuke. And you'll quickly find your favorite artist among, among all of these illustrations. The Stunfisk. Let's see. Nope, just a stadium and a magneton at the end there. 
That is what I liked to do before I did the YouTube videos. Just buy a Japanese booster box and appreciate the artworks. It's just so nice. There's so much cool stuff in these. It's not just about the flashy ones. Let's see. Yo, the Cerulech. This is another one that I really wanted from this set. Really glad I pulled it this time around. I don't think... Wait. This kind of seems familiar, but I don't think I pulled it in my last opening, did I? I'm not too sure. But this is really, really cool. Here's our last art rare. So very, very nice. And the Kuraidon there at the end. You, of course, also deserve a sleeve, of course, Rulich. There we go. Very nice. Okay, just a handful of booster packs left. We're just going to take our time, appreciate the illustrations, because that's what we're here for. Just a chill opening, just relaxing a little bit, and look at pretty Pokemon cards, of course. Just look at pretty Pokemon cards. All right, three booster packs left. And I can already tell this was a really successful opening, man. Really, really nice. While I do still have the time to talk a little bit about things, have you gotten your pre-order in for the high-class Japanese set this year? What is it? Terrestal Festival or something like that? I might have gotten the name completely wrong. Um, I've got one box in for pre-order at Amazon Japan, but I'm probably going to open a bunch more of that set. Probably gonna open a bunch more of that set. I know the um, the evolutions have recently been leaked, but you have to think those aren't going to be the only special art rares. I feel like I feel like there are gonna be more, especially full art trainers. And I'm personally really excited to see what they can do with those, because the full art trainers from V Star Universe were really cool, especially the Irida and Adaman. Those were really really cool. Okay, it wasn't a box with two super rares, but I, I really can't complain. Not only did we get a banger promo with this Pikachu right here, we also got the Hydragon SAR. That is such a cool card. Yo, man, that looks so nice. And then, of course, our three art rares. The Mesprit and the Cerulich are definitely my highlights. The Sveal is cute, though. The Sveal is definitely really, really cute. Well, but I guess that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then a like would be greatly appreciated. If you didn't, then by all means, give it a dislike. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like, so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here is a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button, click this one first, then click this video. Check out any of the other videos in the description below, and I hope we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace, take care.